Hi, I'm Jennifer DePasso, and this is The Fabric and Way. Today, we're in Germantown, New York, visiting Field Apothecary. This is Dana Yudi's farm, and she's gonna show us how the whole process of taking her products from the farm to the bottle works. Let's see what she has for us. happy to have you. I'm really looking forward to showing you the field and having you experience what we're doing here on the farm. Shall we head over to see what's going on in the field? Yeah, of course. Excellent. Hey, Dana. So, you spent some years in Brooklyn. Uh, working as a photography agent. Do you remember where your interest for herbalism started? I was growing a lot of herbs in Brooklyn um, and just really saw that my children weren't getting sick. You know, it really kept them healthy. I feel like herbs are really about keeping keeping us healthy. Do you have any tips for those that want to start like including herbs in their lives? What would be the one thing that I could do today just to like get, in, you know, get herbs in my life and just change my cabinet? Bitters, incorporating more bitters into our diet. I think it's just such an important facet to overall health. I made the grocery store bitters because I really want people to realize that they can get these ingredients in their grocery store. They're available, things like dandelion, even herbs and spices, you know, cardamom, coriander. Some of these are carminative herbs that help with digestion. And really, it's just kind of getting used to the idea of, of working these into the diet, figuring out ways to be creative. Um, using ingredients, culinary, and experiencing herbs. And bitters is such a great entry point for so many people because bitters is kind of the seat of health. You know, if we have a healthy digestive fire, it really helps bring balance to the overall system, the overall body, looking at it from a holistic standpoint. An approach bitters from, uh, as I've learned over time, kind of a cooling perspective or a warming perspective. And I like to think of it from looking at the person, their constitution. What is their makeup? Do they tend to be a little bit heavier? Do they tend to be really thin? And then you also think about it from a seasonal perspective. Is it really cold out? Is it really warm out? So some, some of the bitter herbs are more warming. Some of them are more cooling. The grocery store bitters that I made is really quite balancing. Um, they're pretty balancing herbs. The herbs tend, at least in my experience, they've shown me the way. So it's like just find a handful of herbs, things like lemon balm and milky oats and um, stinging nettles, which is one of my favorites. Tulsi is another one of my favorites. Just getting to know a few and finding ways to incorporate them in your home, using them in cooking and, as I've mentioned, you know, things like that. And you're extending it. It doesn't, it's not the cabinet only anymore as we traditionally know what it is. It's mm -hmm. just that everywhere in your home. It, I do in Ayurveda what is called Abhyanga, which is applying a daily oil. Um, I do it before I shower in the morning. I use sesame oil. I tend to use sesame oil in the um, winter, and then I'll use more of a cooling oil, such as coconut, in the summer. So it's just, you know, and a lot of times I'll infuse them with herbs. I'll infuse them with essential oils, which I use very mindfully. Um, but the idea is just, you know, figuring out figuring out ways to have them around me. Um, I think they keep us well. This is the nursery, AKA our greenhouse. Um, we actually start in the spring, because we're obviously upstate in, in cooler weather, um, primarily what happens here is all the seedlings take place. Um, we start a lot of things in what is called 10 rows, which you can see here. And then from the 10 rows, they get potted up into six packs and they stay in here until you know spring and it gets to be warm enough that we can move them outside of our planning. We're so busy harvesting, working in the gardens, getting the beds tended to, weeded, all of that in the summer. So winter is more of our time to plan and lay out the gardens for the following year. 
So the Philip Pratikari products can be found in different markets, but you also started a Medicinal CSA, mm -hmm. and I just wonder if you could just tell us more a bit about that. The idea behind our CSA, our wellness box, is that it's four seasons, so each season you get 10 remedies delivered to your door, or you can come to the farm if you happen to be in the vicinity. Um, and the idea is to help people transform their medicine chest like they've done with their food pantry. You can kind of see how there's a common, you know, a common goal or a common thread throughout a lot of the work that we're doing here at the field. It's a natural sauna. <laughs> yes, exactly. I come, up, I come up here to get some toxins out. So these you can see, these are all of our drying racks. We've made them, we made them here on the farm. We have marshmallow leaf. That's beautiful. Yeah, I use this in a tea. Some nettles, stinging nettles. I think I talked about that earlier. This is one of my favorite herbs. This and Tulsi. Um, this is like spinach on steroids. It's full of vitamins, minerals. We have milky oats, no. which is in our anti-anxiety tea formula. Okay. This is lemon balm. So we dry a lot of these for teas and a blessed thistle which is a, a great bitter herb to know about, really good for digestion. Is lavender up here, which is quite, quite beautiful. It's so beautiful. You can really see how it retains a lot of the color. This is true hyssop. Um, it kind of has a eucalyptus-like smell to it. You have a little bit for anything. Yes, right? that's that's the hope, exactly. <laughs> I think I told you this the first time we met, but um, I had this idea that having a farm or just living here, this beautiful place, you would just like wake up very early, do your stuff, mm -hmm. and then you would have the day just to like, I don't know, do something else. But it is very busy, that's something that I learned from you. And I'm just wondering how's your day, like what's your routine? What I've learned through the experience of doing what we're doing here at the field is my lifestyle is a lot more um, seasonal. So late spring, summer, and early fall are really intense. It's a lot of, you know, long hours on the farm. I'm blessed to have some amazing volunteers that come and help, um, but it is, it's a lot of work. And I don't think we realize how how much work it is to farm. You know, people kind of talk about it. I, I often say, in fact, it would be great if that was a community service, you know, where teens <laughs> had to had to spend some time on a farm. I think we'd have a very different world. So let's talk about family for a second. And um, I know that your motivation to move here was also to just to provide, you know, your children with this surroundings and this life experience. And I'm just wondering how did that family routine change? Did it change at all? Like, what what's different now? I think here my kids have a certain sense of freedom. Um, it's really, it's really interesting to see that. That coupled with the fact that they can identify herbs, um, which is really a beautiful thing. I they know that they can just take a walk and they'll be walking through what can be medicine, you know. And it's a very different mindset to have at a young age. And at one point, you know, it's something our grandparents certainly had. They knew that. They knew that, oh, we need, you know, I need to go get something from the yard. <laughs> yeah. It was just how it was done. So that's a really cool thing to see and witness. What will be the biggest lesson you've learned so far? I guess the biggest lesson is really to try to take time to enjoy the day and realize how precious life is. And I know a lot of that sounds, you know, maybe, uh, what's the right word, cliche. But, but we are surrounded by so much beauty and really just trying to find the time to take, take in and savor the moment um, and breathe. You know. Why do we need Philip Pratikari in our lives? Um, one of the things I think that makes us really quite special is that we are seed to bottle. And um, I really like that about the products that we're making. Of course, we do buy in some. There, there are a handful of herbs that we aren't able to grow here. But I really, I really make a point to have at least one herb in all of the remedies that actually come from our farm. And I really like that part about field, and I think it really makes our products quite special. <laughs>